Hey there, I have to start by apologizing for my radio voice. I haven't been feeling so well during this uh, time of the year and the weather, but uh, today I'm here just to, to share a quick tip for Easter. And uh, you probably watched some of them already, and I hope that you're finding a lot of great insights and great information and great tactics. And the more I was, <laughs> you know, spending time trying to figure out, okay, what's that tip that I have for Easter? Uh, and uh, thinking of all the churches that I work with and thinking even about my own church, uh, there was this moment at a time where I caught myself simply trying to find, okay, I have to give my best tip. You know, I have to be uh, the one that really says the most amazing thing that will change their lives as far as what's going to happen this Easter. And you got to use this tool or you got to use this tactic. And uh you're probably not going to expect this from a video that is supposed to be a tactic or a tip for Easter. But the more I spend time trying to find that perfect tip to share with you, the more I felt the conviction of the Lord to simply say, bring me in, uh, just bring me in. And uh, there was a moment in my in my journey as a church communicator where I had to look around and I remember looking at everything we we're doing and always asking this question, there has to be a better way to do these things. There has to be a better way to do these things. And I know that you're most likely in that place where Easter is approaching fast and maybe you feel like we just got, you know, from the whole Christmas season and now there's another season coming really, really fast. And, um, you know, the to-do is growing, uh, the, the deadlines are approaching and, there's really no time whatsoever to plan, to strategize, to think, and to pray. And I know that was true for me. So the more I was seeking that, like, oh, man, I have to have like the most genius idea and tip to share with this group of people. <laughs> and I think that was coming out of a place of, no, well, I know it was coming out of a, a place of pride. The more I kept, the more I realized that uh, there was one thing that was missing often in my journey as a church communicator, and that was prayer. So this may not be the most expected <laughs> tip of all of them, but I need to be honest with you and just open my heart and share with you what the Lord has been placing in me. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping that this will maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe it will, it will be just for one person. Maybe there's just, just this one individual that needs to hear what God has been putting in my heart for you guys today. So if this is not you, move on to the next the next video. I'm, I am very confident there's a bunch of great tips and tactics, but here's what I have. Um, in all the things that I was doing for church communication, uh, there were big things, there were little things, there were big deadlines, big events, and there were little just, oh, these nagging tasks that just had to be done. And uh, I, I had this moment of, just looking around and realizing, wait a minute, God is not too busy to make this printer work right now. God is not too busy. He's not too busy feeding all the kids in Africa or saving the, the people in Asia or going to these remote uh, villages in South America. Uh, he's not so busy with that that he can't come in and actually help me with this one little thing that I need to get done before the end of the day today. Um, and recognizing that he is able and capable of helping me with little tasks that are either time consuming or things that I just don't know how to do well, because let's be honest, that happens often. Uh, we have all of these, um, these crazy hats, uh, designer, programmer, encoder, and uh, content writer, and strategist, and you name it. And we, and we have to be visionaries, and we have to cast vision for volunteers, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, and I was doing slides on Sunday, and I was preparing those slides for Sunday. So <laughs> as you can tell, I've been there. And uh, I just didn't invite God in. I never thought that he would be willing to stop everything he was doing. <laughs> One of you have got, right? Uh, stop everything that he was doing to help me with this little tiny ugh, thing that I was that I was struggling with today. Um, and that was a piece that I had to reconcile. I had to find the character of God that was in line with this, with this piece of he can still be really busy, right? Because <laughs> God is all, always busy. But he can still be really busy with all of that. And yet he's a father. He can still 
stop everything he's doing. That's just the way that I picture it in my mind. So bear with me on that one. He can still stop everything he's doing to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to help you with this thing. Okay. Because me as a mom, I will stop everything I'm doing to help my kid tie his shoes because in that moment it's important for him. So that was the God of the little things. Now there's also the God of the big things. And there were times where we couldn't do five banners. We just had money to maybe print one. And the question is always this, where in town are we going to put this banner? Where in town are we going to put this sign? And we didn't have that much to work with. And so decisions had to be made. Um, and my goal was to, instead of just looking at it from a world standpoint, I want a God to tell me where in the city do you want this banner to go? Uh, because maybe there's just this one person that needs to see it. And God, I want you to speak to me and tell me where you want this banner to go. Um, we only have money to print 50 brochures. God, I pray that these 50 will go to the hands of 50 people and all of them will have an encounter with you. I want to pray so big that he would move in my ministry as a church communicator beyond what I can do on my own. And I had to look at God from these two angles and see him as a father able to take care of these little things that simply matter to me and see him as a king, uh, sovereign, powerful, almighty, uh, able to do with, with our resources far more than we could all ever think or imagine, abundantly more. And uh, that radically changed everything I do, how I do it, how I see it. And it, it allowed me peace when it comes to moments where we didn't have the budget because I knew that with whatever we had, got to do so much. Uh, it gave me peace with recruiting volunteers because instead of looking at them from a um, skill set standpoint, I would look at them as, okay, God put in my heart to invite this person to help me. It may not look like they have the skill set for it, but somehow this name keeps popping. And you know what? Let's see what happens. And I've seen cases like this over and over and over where I would just allow God to speak. So to sum it up, invite God in. Take some time to pray about your Easter service. Take some time to pray about the resources that you have available. And it really doesn't matter how many or how little you have. Just take time to pray and ask God to multiply it. Ask God to multiply your time. I've seen him do this in my life over and over and over where the days where I spend time with him in the morning, somehow my hours multiply or I just become more productive that day. So bring him in, invite him into your communication department. And um, the last little bit that I want to share with you is this. What you do is a ministry. If it is a ministry, it has to rely on God. It has to rely on the his power and his might and uh, his ability to multiply and his ability to speak to you. And so if you can take these things to heart, and again, maybe there's a, just one person that needs to hear this, and uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, but take this to heart. Stop today. And you can, you know, all of those tactics that you're learning, um, you will have time to implement them. Uh, and I, you know, what's interesting too, is that if you speak to him and you ask him, he may tell you which ones you need to do for your church, because there may be tactics that are not for your church just yet, or maybe they will never be because you're different, uh, in your, um, like your core values, your DNA and how you operate or how many people you have available to help. So I hope that today you would spend some time in prayer for your services, for your Easter services, for your community, for your neighborhoods, for your pastor, and for yourself. Uh, trust in the one that can do anything and everything. I'll see you guys later.